Hello YouTube, Dave here again. It's been quite a while actually since the last time I did a video in front of a camera and uh, I apologize for that but I want to sort of get back into that format a little bit more. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at another Starfinder product. Uh, I've been sort of looking at them all throughout the week so far, the last couple of days. Uh, so I just want to keep that going and today I'm going to be looking at the at the time of the recording of this video at least, the most recent hardcover product to be released for the Starfinder role-playing game, and that is Starfinder Armory. Now, by the time I actually release this video, Alien Archive 2 will, should be on store shelves, but I don't have that one as of yet, and like I said, I'm recording that, uh, this video actually a couple days before that. Uh, for full disclosure, uh, Paizo Publishing did send me this book for the purposes of doing a review. However, the opinions expressed in the video are completely and totally my own. They're not looking to control what I say or how I look at the product. Uh, and they actually, in the, the email exchanges, said they wanted open and honest uh, criticism of their products. So, what I'm going to do first is just sort of do a flip through on the book and I'll give my actual thoughts on it. So, without further ado, let's uh, have a look and see what's inside. Alright, so here we have the book itself, and I, I love the cover art on all of these books, honestly. There's just really, really cool stuff, and I love how it actually sort of tells a little bit of a story. You've got uh, what looks like basically sort of an equipment shop here, uh, with the uh, with a Vesk soldier, I would say, uh, looking over some, you know, a heavy, or a long arm, or, you know, a heavy weapon at the very least. And then you got this little mouse person. Uh, the Yoski, I think that's it's pronounced, uh, just carrying some stuff. So just getting a really, really cool, really, really cool thing. There's some helmets in the background, and it's probably not the case, but that kind of, this one here, kind of almost looks a little bit like uh, the Samus's helmet from some of the Metroid games. So, and it's probably not. It's obviously probably, you know, something completely different, but seems like a cool Easter egg anyway, or maybe I've just been playing a little bit too much uh, Metroid games lately. Uh, so, on the back of the book here, we just have the uh, little uh, blurbs about it, so it says, Gear up. It's a dangerous universe out there, and often the difference between survival and being the next meal for an angry Kassarik uh, is having the right equipment. From guns to augmentations to high-tech and magical devices for every imaginable situation, Starfinder Armory is your guide to everything you need. Whether you are a frontline fighter, stealthy spy, or scholarly spellcaster, inside the book uh, you'll find the following. So, there's some things in here that I was obviously expecting. There was uh, one thing that I was kind of hoping was going to be in this book, and there's one thing that really, really uh, took me by surprise. So I'm not going to read all the stuff off uh, back here, but let's just go ahead and uh, start flipping through it. So, what armory is, is it's basically just an expanded equipment book uh, for the majority of it. There are tons of brand new weapons, uh, armor, weapon fusions, there's just like all kinds of, um, you know, really, really cool things in here. Uh, and one thing I actually really, really like about the, the book is its um, organization. And, you know, things were organized really well in the Starfinder core rulebook, but one of the things that I really like is that they have them sort of broken down by their energy types if they deal in energy types. So you got like the cryo weapons here, uncategorized first, uh, but then there's actually a little bit of a break between um, the cryo weapons, for example, and then you have like your disintegrator. So that actually kind of gives a little bit more separation. And it's because there's more room, obviously, to de uh, dedicate to this stuff. Uh, so in the uh, the Starfinder core rulebook, everything was just sort of condensed together. There were no gaps in between. And it seems like a minor thing, but for me, it just makes a much cleaner organization. And it makes it a little bit easier. If you're looking for advanced weapons and you want something that deals plasma, <clears throat> it's just a little bit easier having these separations in between to, to find the one that you're looking for. And they do that basically throughout the entirety of the book. So there's a lot of just, again, really, really cool stuff. And uh, lots of charts for items, but there are interspersed throughout. There's some really fantastic artwork <clears throat> for the individual weapons as well. And there's some really imaginative uh, things in here. Now, I'll be honest, at this point in time, I'm mostly grounded in, like, you know, high fantasy, medieval fantasy type of stuff. So, to see the imagination at work for some of these guns, like the uh, the Rocket Stormcaller, <coughs> or the, uh, 
X order show projector, which looks like one of the old, like, um, I don't want to say megaphones, but like a brass instrument kind of thing that's attached to a gun. Uh, there's just some really fantastic imagination thrown in here. And like, so there's just tons of expanded equipment and it's all levels too, which is one of the things that I really, really am happy about. Uh, since a lot of books tend to focus more on higher level stuff that I find, or it's sort of the mid-range stuff, so it's nice to still see that there's a bunch of things for level 1 characters, level 1 options. Uh, that was my phone, I forgot to silence, so sorry about that. And again, just some really, uh, just great artwork uh, throughout the entirety of this book. Uh, the numbing beam. Again, descriptions for everything, so it's more than just the chart, it actually goes into a little bit of detail, which is always nice. And they did the same thing in the core rulebook, but having more options really is just overall better. Uh, now we got some uh, melee weapons here, and uh, right off the bat there's a couple of things that I really like in here. Uh, the first one being the uh, the war fan. <clears throat> And uh, the reason for that is, um, since I made a video game reference earlier, uh, I'm a big fan of like the Mortal Kombat franchise, and I could see wanting to make a character based off of Katana uh, and fight with the war fans, which I think is uh, really cool. So again, just really, really awesome stuff there in terms of the uh, weapons and equipment, the ammunition. Like, there's just details on things that you, you don't even necessarily... Uh, think of you have information on corporations that manufacture some of the weapons if you want to uh, incorporate that really into uh, your campaign. Uh, I've got to be honest, I definitely intend to incorporate the company uh, Lethal Innovations because I just think that that is an awesome, awesome name. Uh, and then you got your weapon accessories. I think I said the, the phrase weapon fusions before and I'm pretty sure that's... Oh no, the weapon fusions are a thing. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't uh, crossing... Uh, RPGs. Uh, so again, these are sort of the equivalent to like magic item uh, enhancements for weapons in a sense. Uh, and uh, just really, again, just some cool stuff. Uh, again, artwork kind of scattered throughout. So there's always something sort of visually interesting to look at as you're flipping through. Uh, you've got the clear weave armor which is why I make sure that all of my player characters in my groups buy at least, at least, um, you know, uh, everyday clothes for their characters. We got the armor section here. And uh, again, just some fantastic artwork in here. I really love the, uh, you got the, sh the show bad harness. And actually, um, in the, the, the session I finally got to run, uh, which I did a video for uh, a few days ago, it was completely impromptu off the top of my head. But I did have somebody make a, a showbot, so this will be something, it's a light armor, but that's something I'm going to have to keep in mind. I wonder what level that is, if I can find it really quickly. Oh, it's level one. Uh, interesting, okay. So yeah, so just some cool stuff, and some beautiful artwork in here. Power armor. Now, this is the section that I've seen referenced and talked about a lot on different Starfinder Facebook groups and uh, a lot of people have said that the section on the power armor alone just having those extra options is one of the biggest selling features of the book and I think it's really cool so power armor uh, basically it's it's like it's almost like an Iron Man suit uh, kind of idea and uh, it gives you some special attacks and special defenses and it also gives you uh, an effective strength. So when you're wearing it, your strength is whatever it is for the armor. For example, if you get all the way up to the level 20 Star Guard armor, it gives you an effective strength of 30 while you're wearing it. Now, if your strength is higher, you still use the strength of the uh, the power armor, to the best of my knowledge. But uh, just a really cool addition, and then, you know, again, it's something that goes well with the uh, with the the system. But a lot of people were really happy about uh, that being included. This was another section that, again, people seem to be really happy with overall, based off of uh, posts that I've seen. So these are your augmentations to your, you know, like your physical body. You've got uh, X legs here, which gives you like faster movement and extra legs and some other things that I think it does, um, like climb speeds. And uh, this is kind of cool because. Um, 
I've seen one of like the the Star Wars. I haven't watched the the show, but I think it was like the Clone Wars thing for Star Wars had Darth Maul back, and uh, basically he had something kind of similar to that. So there's just so many things in here that you can use to sort of make characters based off of you know just about anything you can think of. <clears throat> you also have some magical ones as well, including the psychoactive eyes, which are terrifying to look at. Uh, but you got fascinating eyes and charming eyes. Morphic skin, uh, like based off of uh, like basic advanced and then doppelganger, uh, which I guess allows you to sort of change your appearance. Necrographs, uh, if you want to have sort of um, ne necrotic stuff grafted onto you. <clears throat> Technological items, which is always great. Uh, the diagnostic lozenge uh, seems kind of cool. You basically swallow it uh, or have it implanted under the skin, and um, as, as long as you're near a receiver, it sort of broadcasts your direction and your vital statistics, which uh, yeah, I think is kind of a neat idea. Physician drone, that just looks really cool. Engineer's puzzle box, laser drill. And you got a pretty cool looking uh, keyboard there that has, you know, a, <laughs> a handle that makes it almost look like a weapon. Uh, but that's just, again, just some really cool stuff in, in this. Uh, strategy games. So this would actually be kind of cool um, to purchase a strategy game, like an actual strategy game, like board game, because you got basic and then you have um, Imperial Conquest. And um, <clears throat> if you have your, your players, you know, uh, involved in a, like one of these games, as long as you can do it with, within a relatively short period of time, I think it'd be cool to actually have a strategy game that you break out uh, in the middle of the, the session. Um, so if they have to play a game of strategy with an NPC to speak with them, um, or to gain their, um, to make an impression with them, to gain their, their trust or whatever, uh, I think it'd be kind of cool to, to actually do that. So anyway, just, just a thought, uh, for one of the ones that obviously has sort of a quicker, uh, quicker play time to it. <clears throat> and here we just have some, uh, magic items and artifacts. <clears throat> and then you got your hybrid items. Earthbound anklets sounds like the kind of thing that I would want. Uh, entropy gloves, uh, holding gloves, sort of like a. Uh, uh, I believe this is like um, the hold person kind of thing. I believe. Uh, once per day is a standard action while wearing the gloves. You can use the embedded yeah spell like ability. <coughs> so it's not like the the gloves of storing kind of thing, but you can actually use these gloves to cast a hold person or hold monster. Now this is one that I actually really think is funny. Uh, it's the vampiric charger. So it's sort of like the next evolution of proprietary chargers. And uh, I mean I'm don't know if I should say this or not, but I almost see this being like an Apple thing. I'm, I'm not an Apple fan. <clears throat> but you put your device in the top of the skull, and then you basically uh, clamp the uh, the jaws onto a living creature, and you drain the creature of its blood and its vitality, um, the, uh, taking like constitution damage, and uh, to recharge the uh, to recharge the battery for like your gun or whatever, um, whatever the device you may want to be charging. So I just I just thought that that was. And again, I, 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 you know, I like to think that I'm a relatively creative person. I would never have come up with something uh, that interesting. And then you got the Wonder Grenade, which uh, it's level 10, so it's going to be a while before I get to introduce it. But um, it just has random effects, and uh, that's an item I cannot wait <laughs> uh, to get a chance to use. And then you've actually just got some basic personal items as well, so it's not all just weapons and armor. Uh, things like that. So there's, uh, again, some really, really cool, just basic mundane stuff that uh, it really expands the list uh, from what was available in the uh, the core rulebook. So uh, it's nice to see stuff like that. And you have just some simple things like a self-heating pot, which, even though it's the future, I kind of like that it looks like an old uh, cauldron type of thing. Uh, mess kits, hammocks, maps, magnetic jack, uh, lighter, uh, which is pretty cool. Then you got um, some drugs and me uh, medicinals and poisons. Uh, so some interesting stuff there as well. And then just some other stuff like food and drink. Uh, and there's vehicles in here. So uh, so I was hoping for... I'll, actually, I'll talk about that a bit more uh, at the end of the video. But uh, So you got some basic uh, vehicles here. Uh, like Basically like land-based and uh, they're like water-based and air-based. But uh, they're all like planetary-based. And then you get into 
uh, class options, which was something that I honestly wasn't expecting uh, <clears throat> from a book about equipment. But you've got, uh, so you have like the augmented archetype um, for basically using, you know, body modifications and stuff like that, uh, which is, which is cool. Uh, I like that idea, but each of the classes also has, uh, something, some new, uh, abilities that they get. Um, most of them interact, obviously, with, uh, the use of equipment stuff, but not necessarily, and, uh, it's just, uh, really nice to see that there's, you know, they're expanding, um, what's in the core book, throughout all of their uh, supplements and not just, you know, the ones that you would traditionally think of. Uh, for example, like if I bought an equipment book, uh, the last thing I would expect would be uh, new abilities for, you know, uh, the different classes to take, uh, new options for them uh, to have. So uh, I really, really like this. I think that this is an absolutely uh, fantastic addition. And uh, for me, it was a huge surprise, actually. Um, it's not something that I really saw discussed a whole lot. So, um, now typically when I know that I'm going to be getting something for a review, I try to avoid as many spoilers as possible. And I think that's basically what happened here, was that it's probably something that everybody knew about well in advance, but because I like to um, experience everything with fresh eyes and not have uh, predetermined expectations, I try to avoid as much stuff as possible. So, anyway, you got all your, your class stuff there, you have your index, and then you, of course you have your open gaming license as well as just an advertisement for the, uh, the Pact Worlds book, which was the one that came out prior to this. So, that was the flip-through of the book. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'll just sort of get to my final thoughts. All right, so we did our uh, flip-through of the book there. So, uh, honestly, when it comes to the Armory book for the Starfinder role-playing game, uh, I have to say that this, to me, is uh, what I would consider to be an essential purchase. It is one of the early books to come out in the uh, the product line, so uh, to a certain extent that almost goes without saying, but if you're a player, for example, and you're looking to, to play in the Starfinder RPG, uh, after the core rulebook, this is the first thing that I would recommend that you get, is the Armory book, just to have the expanded uh, options there. Um, as a game master, this is probably, you probably want to get the item, the, the books, more or less in the order that they came out in, but there is an argument to be made that you may want to pick this up before getting the Pact Worlds book, uh, just to have those extra options for your characters to play through, uh, before you get to the point where you have them start exploring the rest of the Pact World system at large. Um, there's a lot of great things in this book, obviously. It's just loaded with uh, fantastic equipment and items. Uh, I like the organization. I mean, like I said, they organize things well in the core rule book as well. But even having those little bit of spaces in between the different energy types for the weapons makes it easier to sort of find what you're looking for, at least for me. And uh, I'm kind of a sucker for organization, so I was really, really happy uh, to see that. Uh, as far as my what I was hoping to have in this book that you know was there, uh, everything I think sort of knocked it out of the park. Uh, one thing that I was hoping for that didn't end up being in there, unfortunately, um, I was hoping for some more expanded or streamlined or even just more of a, a section dedicated to uh, ships, constructing ships, and ship battles. Uh, now that could be an entire supplement uh, in of itself in the future. Uh, it was something that I was expecting to have uh, in this book, or hoping to have. I shouldn't say expecting, but it was something that I was definitely hoping for. So the fact that that wasn't included was a little bit of a disappointment to me, uh, but not a deal breaker by any stretch of the imagination. And the fact that there's player character class options for all of the classes, uh, which is something that I wasn't expecting, uh, it was a very pleasant surprise to see that. So. Uh, overall, um, I can't recommend this book enough, and uh, like I said, this is completely and totally 100% my genuine thoughts and, and feelings on this. I know that uh, that Paizo did send this to me, and uh, a lot of times there seems to be um, sort of a bias towards giving favorable reviews for things that have been you know, sent to you by companies because you want them to keep doing it. Uh, but honestly, um, you know, it's a situation where I don't think they needed to really worry about this. I mean, this book is strong enough uh, on its own that um, there's really not much that I can think of in terms of, uh, of criticisms other than the fact that I would have liked to have seen uh, the Starship stuff in here. But 
that notwithstanding, what is in this book is fantastic, and uh, if you're someone who's serious about playing Starfinder, you owe it to yourself to have this in your collection. If you're a player, this should be the next thing you get after the core rulebook. If you're a game master, then uh, again, after you get the core rulebook in Alien Archive, this is the book that I would recommend getting next. So, uh, really fantastic stuff. If you haven't yet, please check it out. And uh, I just want to thank everyone who's taken the time out of their day to watch this video. I appreciate your support. And uh, let me know in the comments below, uh, what are some of your favorite items uh, from this book? Um, what items from it have you used in your campaigns? Have you used the player character options or uh, gotten to make use of some of the vehicles? So let me know in the comments below. I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, once again, thank you guys very much. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Take care.